Thank you very much to world champion Peter Gilchrist for doing the clinic and a great thank you to Q Sport Singapore for hosting the event. Enjoy. This question is from Australia. The player wanted to know about playing the re-spot shot. His question is that on tables where the ball throws wide or the cushions are a bit slow, he sees average players struggle to make this shot and really struggle to leave a good position. So we're asking how Peter would play these shot under those conditions. Yeah, yes, and this one's, uh, it all depends on the, the table. Now, if you've got a, a new cloth on, and it's, uh, you know that your opponent's balls won't slide off this side cushion, and then hit the top cushion. And uh, so I'd play a roundabout for the pyramid spot area. The reason being, if you play it like maybe 90% of the billiards players and play the, the opponent's ball off three cushions, one, two, three, and back over here, which is a more conventional style, there's always the chance that this ball will, because it slides off this cushion, it could go one, two, and into the middle pocket. So I'd be playing it something like this. And then I've got the in-off yellow next, and then up to the drop panel. This question is from Scotland. The player wants to know, when you've got a middle pocket loser and it's just too wide, you can't make it with running side, a long loser is not on, how do you play this one? Yeah, like you said, yes, and uh, the half ball in-off isn't on. Um, Screwing it off and sending the opponent's ball up and down the table is, is an option, but it's, I think that's uh, missable. So I'd be playing it and I'd put the white as far over on the D as I possibly could, and I'd be playing it so that my opponent's ball would go off the side cushion, top cushion, bolt cushion, and hopefully uh, somewhere in the middle of the table. So something like this. And so the pace is good with this one. It's, it's, it's slid a little bit. But yeah, I've got a nice little in off the yellow there. Not a problem. This question is from Australia again. In the situation where the balls lie here, the player has an easy half ball in off the white, in the yellow ball in the middle, to drop it down for a drop cannon or he can go directly to the drop cannon, yellow to red. Okay, with this shot, uh, I'm definitely going straight for the, the drop cannon. The reason being, if I was to play the in off my opponent's ball, in off the yellow, and dropping the yellow ball down there, and then playing along the drop cannon, there's always the chance of the white ball, before it, before it gets to the red ball, it could turn off. Whereas from here, I play a firm shot, and I know that the ball from here to the yellow ball, it's not going to roll off, particularly because I'm playing it quite firm. And I'm playing this shot with more authority uh, to get the balls where I want them at the top. Whereas if I was to drop the yellow down, which a lot of players would do, um, there's a chance that it could go wrong, could turn off slightly. So definitely the drop cannon. And I'll play it something like this. This question is from England. The red ball is on the centre spot. The player is in hand. The yellow ball is buried in a very awkward position on the top cushion. The 
uh, questioner wants to know how Peter would go about getting this yellow ball back into play. Yeah, there's so many pitfalls uh, with, with this shot. Um, you know, ideally you, you would be, maybe be playing to get on the red ball, going off the red and sending the red somewhere around there and having a, a mini drop cannon. You know, but the fact is with that, if the red comes round and it lands somewhere there, you're more or less finished or you, you, you're left with a tricky cannon off the side cushion. So my thought process on this would be to play a few in off reds, <clears throat> get the red ball around to the middle area, somewhere around here. So after I've played a few in off reds, so in off red in the top, again, send it to the pyramid, another in off red, send the red up the table, get the red to around about this area, then pop the red, and I'm wanting my white ball, after I've potted the red, so I put the red in the middle, and I'm wanting my white ball around about here after the pot red, so then I can play this shot to try and retrieve the yellow ball. I've caught it a little bit on the left hand, on the right hand side of the yellow, but I'm still okay. I can go in off the yellow. The red's in a good position then, and so that's the way I would go about getting uh, the yellow out there. This is my daughter Isabel, by the way. This is another question about recovering a yellow ball that's in an awkward situation. In this case, the yellow ball is out of balk, but it's buried down there on the side rail. Peter has control of the red. How's he going to go about developing that yellow ball? Okay, I think what most players would uh, would play here is just the the straight in off red into this side into this side pocket, sending the red off one, two, pushing and around about here. But that's uh, that's fraught with a bit of danger because if the red comes comes about there, there's not much you can do. So what I'd be doing here is playing the two in off reds. So in off red into this corner pocket. Sending the red off the top cushion, the side cushion, hopefully over here, for then the in off red into this pocket, and then sending the red off the top cushion and hopefully somewhere around there. So let's give it a go. I haven't hit the red hard enough there. Ideally, I wanted the red to be around about there. And then the in off red, sending the red towards the yellow. And that's not too bad. And this is a third question about recovering a yellow that's out of play and on the cushion. In this case, the yellow ball is on the side rail, not quite level with the pink ball, with the pink spot. It's a little bit closer to the middle pocket cushion. Peter has control of the red and he's going to see how he develops the yellow ball. Okay, this shot, you know, this is, uh, this has flummoxed me a few times, uh, particularly in the World Championship, that, the last World Championship. This is a shot that I missed on, uh, I think it was 300 and something. And I've got on the red ball over this side of the table. And I've sent the red, hopefully, I, I was trying to get the red around about there. So I could just play a nice little easy cannon. But I've sent the red, I've sent the red to just past it. I've hit it too hard and I'm there. And um, I've ended up trying to play a very thin cannon off the, uh, off the yellow ball. I got the double kiss and missed. So... You know, I've, I've thought about this shot, this uh, this position a lot, and uh, Jason and myself have had a, a, a lot of talk about this one as well. And the the position where I want to be here, um, as a billiards player, you're always looking for the half ball, half ball shots. But this is one where I wouldn't look for the half ball, so I'd be going in off the red a few times, and hopefully sending the red after I played it a few times in the middle. I'd be wanting the red ball in two around about that position there now that's not a half ball uh, that's not a half ball uh, cannon 
the half ball, my white ball is going to be hitting around about there. So I'll be playing it a bit thinner and hopefully sending the red toward that pocket, hitting the yellow ball full and sending it towards the top of the table. So thinner than the half ball and something like this. Bad shot on the yellow. It's turned out okay. I wanted a full yellow really to bump it over. This question is from England. The question is about, in this situation, the, Peter's the white ball. He's got an easy in off the yellow. Where does he want to put the yellow? The questioner asked, does Peter want to put the yellow here? Or does he want to put the yellow here? Or does he want to put the yellow here? Okay. Yeah, it's a good question, this one, isn't it? Because um, if you go in off and you go direct for the, the drop cannon, and you're not sure of the pace of the table, the danger is that when you play this in off, the, your opponent's ball could finish up on the side cushion, and you're finished. So I would definitely play this one, again, looking for the pyramid spot, in off the yellow, yellow to the pyramid spot, in off into one of the corner pockets, and then the drop cannon. So definitely not the in off drop cannon straight away. You're doing it in two or three shots to get to the drop cannon. Uh, this question is from England. It's an interesting situation. The player's been playing top of the table and he's just got them out of position. The yellow is outside that box where you want the ball and it's on the cushion. He's slightly out of position on the red as well. This is a Walter Lindrum shot that Walter Lindrum used to... Uh, allegedly gather them for uh, nursery cannons. Uh, Peter, how are you going to play this one? Yeah, this is a dangerous shot as well, isn't it? Because if you play, um, you know, you're playing the cannon off the, the, the side cushion and the top cushion, sending the uh, yellow over towards the red, the red's going to go down here. But you can definitely get the cover. So there's two ways of playing it. You play it very thin on the red and hardly move the red, pushing the red to a roundabout there and the yellow ball will come around there, or you play it um, a little bit harder on the red and a little bit fuller and send in the red off the top cushion and back up. You know, the one thing that you don't want to be doing here is sending the red, I think, onto the top cushion because if this one comes along, like you say, you've got the cover. So I'd be playing it something like this. Beautiful. Not, not quite the, the Lindrum. Uh, nursery cannon position, but that's okay. This question's from Wales. Uh, the question has uh, been practicing his top of the table. He's seen the top, uh, top players. They've been playing floating white. They've got this ball a little bit further to the side, but mostly it's, it's chipped down near the top cushion and the player has seen guys developing this ball back up off the top cushion and he wants Peter's advice on the best way to get this ball back up off the top cushion now that he's got it too close. Yeah, uh, good question again. A lot of players I've seen, you know, that would be they try and get on the uh, pot the red and try and get their ball to around about here. I know what you're, you're saying here, Alex, you know, to play the cannon um, off the red, this side of the yellow, and popping it back up. Now, the danger with this shot, if I was to play that, the danger is that you could play it and get the cover. You know, it's possible to get the cover. So I, there's two ways that I would play this shot. The first one, I'd be playing it from, I'd get on the red and play it from this way, and I'd want the red ball on the top cushion, bang on the top cushion, and I'd be pushing this ball just slightly up and then playing a little cannon and then gathering them a little bit further on. So something like this. A little bit too hard. Let's try it again. I 
that's a bit better. And then we can just maneuver them into a, a nice position, hopefully then sending this yellow ball up to the line, getting on the pot red, and then getting them perfect in position. So that's that way. Now the other way would be, I would, I would again, I wouldn't be playing it to try and come this side of the yellow. I'd be there and sending the yellow back up to the line and then be on the pot red. So something like this. A little bit too hard, but hopefully, yeah, yellow there. I'm on the pot red, another pot red, and eventually getting over this side of the table and getting the yellow into a good position. Something like that. This question uh, is regarding getting to top of the table when the, the balls are close to top of the table but not quite right. In this case, the, Peter's got an easy pot red, but the yellow ball, it's in the general area of the spot, but it's not really where he wants it. The player wanted to see uh, how Peter would go about trying to develop top of the table from this position. Yeah, there's a few variations here. Obviously, you know, it would be ideal if the opponent's ball was on the red line, but as you can see, it's way past there. So what I'd be thinking about here is playing the pot red, coming over here, and uh, and playing the, the cannon, sending the red to a round route there, pushing the, the yellow over. Maybe he's playing for a drop cannon after that. If I was to come a little bit low on the red after I've potted the red, I'd be playing the cannon and moving the yellow back towards the line and being on the pot red. So there's a few little variations of that. So I'll just give it a few goes and see what happens. Yeah, that one's worked out quite nice, that, that cannon. So now I can come this side of the yellow and push the yellow on the line, which is where I want it to be, really. So I pushed it back down. I can now get on the, on the line I've gone. Maybe it's not, just not hard enough there on the red. Ideally... I want it to be here. If I'm here, I'm perfect. I'm pushing it exactly where I want to. This shot, I play the, I play the gathering cannon here. So I'll just give it a go. And uh, so now we're going to do a little bit of reverse top. So, you know, th there's all different kinds of shots, but that's worked out all right. It could have gone a little bit different. I could have gone uh, the other side of the yellow, but I'm quite happy with that. I think I'd make another 20 points from that. This question's my question. I saw Peter play this shot in a match. Uh, he needed to score fast. He got back to top of the table very quickly when it appeared to me that he had lost position. Can you just describe this one to us, Peter? <clears throat> yes, yeah, a lovely shot this, Jason. I remember playing it actually and, and it worked out really well. Obviously, the, the cannon just not, uh, the, the direct cannon just not on unless playing it with screw, which you don't want to be doing because then if I was to screw over, I'd be losing the red ball and I'd be quite fortunate that maybe it's get on the in off white. Another way, maybe you'd, you'd maybe think about playing the screw back off the, the, uh, the white ball and that's missable. So the double kiss cannon not on. So the way that I played it, I played my cue ball with right hand side, cushion first skimming off the red so just leaving the red there and just touching up on the opponent's ball so something like this this last one the questioner wanted to uh, get some help he's working on his top of the table he wanted Peter to make a break at top of the table and talk us through. He's got the yellow in perfect position. He's got an easy pot red. He's going to tell us how he's developing the break, what he's doing with the cue ball. Okay, right, yes. The opponent's ball is in perfect position here. My, uh, my thoughts here, I just want to be moving the uh, opponent's ball 
up and down, up and down. The way to do this is playing a little few cannons from this side. Once the yellow moves this far down, I'm over here. I'm going off the top cushion for the correcting cannon and nudging it back over. So let's just give it a go. Now I'm playing this cannon here, um, and then I want to be playing two pot reds. So one pot red into there, back to where I started, pot red in there, and then a cannon. What I don't want to be doing here is landing straight on the red after I've played the cannon, because then I'm only going to have to play the pot red and then another cannon. So I'm doing myself out of three points, which in a break, you know, sometimes, you know, if you're only going to play one pot red instead of two, what should be an 80 break becomes a 50 break if you're only playing the one pot red. So wherever you can, try to play two pot reds. So we've got eight points there, and we're back to where we started. So we just do it, repeat the process. Again, here I'm thinking the two pot reds, just like the last time. Back to where we started. What I'd be thinking here, you know, my touch hasn't been great there. You know, I've, I've only played maybe the sequence of two or, two or three uh, uh, reds and cannons. But the white ball, this is quite a, a quick table. And the opponent's ball is gone. After this cannon, it'll go to about the middle of the red and the top cushion. So now I'm thinking to myself, right, I've got to come this side of the red and be playing the correcting cannon from off the top cushion, nudging the yellow back to where we started. So this is my thought process now. I'm playing a cannon, then the pot red, coming over here, and then a correcting cannon. So I'm going to come high on the red. Now this shot, I'm playing with a lot of left-hand side, just pushing the red to around about there, off the top cushion, pushing the yellow back to where we started. Ideally, you know, I didn't get I didn't get a good on the red there, so I've had to play off the cushion. I've landed here. This can go wrong because if the table turned off a little bit, I'm playing a little, you know, just touching the yellow. If the table turns off, I could be in trouble. So ideally, we want to be a lot closer than this. Looks like I'm going to have to play the correcting cannon again after this pot red. I didn't get right last time, so we'll try and get on the pot red after this cannon in a, a better fashion. That's not bad. Okay, so we've played a sequence there. We've maybe got a 30 or 40 break out of this. And we're more or less back where we started. Now, with this, I pushed this yellow ball. Because I went out of position, I was over here. I pushed the yellow more towards the spot that I want it to be. So I'm looking now. I could be playing the pot red and just fiddle about with the yellow to try and get it back. But I'm looking at this, and I can get the yellow back to where I want it in this one cannon. So that's what I'm going to be playing here. So not hard enough, but uh, I knew that I'd have to cross the ball line soon. So this is the pot red and the ball line crossing. And back up for the correcting cannon.
I ended up a little bit straight on the red there, so I've had to play screw back off the cushion. Not ideal, but there we go. Again, straight on the red, so I've missed out on three points. Ideally, I wanted an angle on the red. Now, the yellow, as you can see, it's not now where ideally where I want to, to get it. So I'm going to be pushing the yellow up to the line of the red ball, getting on the pot red, coming this side, and then pushing the yellow back to where I want it. So pushing the yellow up to the line. Uh, this is an interesting question. This is a shot that we see a lot of people play in different ways and depending on where that yellow ball is, the shot varies. Sometimes you see players playing this with check side, sometimes running side, sometimes stun or screw. We're going to ask Peter on how he would play this with that yellow ball, small variations of where it sits now. Yeah, okay. This is, uh, this is interesting because if the, if the yellow ball was a little bit further along, you know, you've got to play this shot with left hand side, you know, because it makes the, the, the pocket a lot bigger. Obviously, if you play with left hand side, the white ball can hit there or there and it'll still go in. So the pocket becomes around about this big with the left hand side. So something like this. Now, if the ball, if your opponent's ball is around about there, right? then it all depends on where you want to put your opponent's ball because that, that shot's more or less unmissable. You know, I still see people, uh, good players as well, still playing this with left-hand side because they feel as though they need to uh, to help the ball in the pocket, but that's not the case because you're actually going, when you're playing in off there, the in-off is coming from around off this angle and you're coming right into the centre of the pocket, so the side doesn't really help it. So the side only helps when it's more or less very close to the cushion, that's when you've got to play it with the left hand side. Um, but when it's like this, no side, don't need it, you can play it with right hand side if you want, and it all depends where you want this ball. What I've tried to do there is play off the jaw and for the drop cannon position. <laughs> Thanks, Peter, that was great. Um, and thanks for watching. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jason. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, we'll be get back playing soon after this uh, COVID situation is over. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, big thanks to uh, Q Sports Singapore and also to World Billiards. And uh, keep practicing where you can and uh, if you can. And uh, yeah, hopefully, so see you soon for some of the tournaments. Cheers. <laughs>